Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex and Plex is a great media organization tool. I've got all my Star Wars movies here loaded on my Plex server that I can easily get to and there's a lot that Plex offers for free without having to buy anything but they do offer something called Plex Pass which gets you a lot of features that are not in the free version and I had a bunch of people writing into me this week asking me if a Plex Pass is necessary. So what I thought I would do is step through some of these features, especially the bigger ones, and show you how those work so you can decide whether or not you need one for your Plex media server. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded, and all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what a Plex Pass gets you. Now, on the free tier, you do get a lot of core functionality without having to pay for anything. You do, of course, need a server to store your media on. That can be a network-attached storage device, an NVIDIA Shield, or even just a PC or Mac. And there's a lot of different ways to run a Plex server. And when you get everything up and running without having to pay for anything, you can store multiple movie, TV show, music, and photo libraries on your server and have that media available to you and to your friends anywhere in the world. But where the Plex Pass comes into play is on the transcoding side. And what transcoding is, is Plex's ability to on the fly take a very large media file and compress it down into something smaller that's more realistic for transmitting over the internet. So for example, right now I'm playing back a movie on my phone. And if I was not at home on a cellular network, Transferring the full bitrate of a Blu-ray MKV file doesn't make a lot of sense. It probably wouldn't even work with the bandwidth that my phone might have available to me out in the middle of nowhere. But I can sustain about two or three megabits per second. And so Plex has a transcoding feature that is available on the free version that will take that larger file and make it smaller. But if you don't have a Plex Pass, you're not able to take advantage of some of the hardware features of Intel chips and NVIDIA GPUs to make that process less CPU intensive. So let me show you what happens when you have a Plex Pass with hardware transcoding enabled. As you can see here, we've got a 1080p movie that is currently being transcoded down to about three megabits per second for my iPhone. And if you haven't seen Strange Days before, it's a really cool movie. And if I scroll down here to my CPU utilization, you'll see that I'm only using about 10% of the little CPU that's built into my seven or eight year old network attached storage device. And that's because the Plex server is able to take advantage of features of its Intel chip to allow this device to transcode much more efficiently. So the movie starts up almost immediately and it's not using a lot of overhead. So if I had other people connecting to my server, they would be able to watch media transcoded as well. And if we did not have this feature on right now, my CPU utilization would probably be in the 65 to 80% range. And some movies may uh, take so much CPU that it's not realistic to watch them in real time. So hardware transcoding can make a huge difference and this is a Plex Pass feature. We've done a lot of content on hardware transcoding in the past, so definitely check out the master playlist to see more about it. There are a couple of exceptions to this though. So if you have an NVIDIA Shield, that will do hardware transcoding without a Plex Pass subscription. And the same is true for the WD MyCloud PR2100 and 4100 network attached storage devices. But any other device will require a Plex Pass subscription to get this hardware transcoding functional. Now related to this, there's another Plex Pass feature that allows you to limit how much upstream bandwidth your server is using. So on the free tier, it'll serve as much as it can send out, but on the Plex Pass side, you have some options for limiting things a bit. So if you go over to settings and remote access, what you'll see here at the bottom is upload speed options. So you can set a maximum upload speed for the server so you don't exceed a certain amount of bandwidth. And you also have the ability to limit individual streams to a particular bit rate. And this might be really useful if you're on a cable connection and don't have a lot of upstream bandwidth to spare. You can limit everybody to three megabits per second and that's it. And that's a great way to keep your uh, upload speeds under control. Now on the free tier, you can't control what things users have access to within a library. It's all or nothing. 
on the FlexPass tier, there are much more granular adjustments you can make. So right now I have two friends that have access to my library. And if I click into my test account here and go over to restrictions, you can see the sorts of things that you can limit uh, your users from doing. So for example, on movies, I could maybe have it only make G-rated movies available. If I have a kid watching, I can also limit by ratings and labels and other things. I can also limit people's ability to download movies onto their own Plex clients and then of course uh, offer different types of restrictions for TV shows and music. Again, this is on the Plex Pass side only. The free tier is all or nothing. Now you can manage multiple servers under your Plex Pass account and your users do not need a Plex Pass in order to gain access to the Plex Pass features that your servers offer but your users would need a Plex Pass to get those features on their own server. Additionally, if you have a Plex Pass account, you get free access to the Plex mobile apps that run on iOS and Android, and that includes the tablet versions of those apps as well. Now, without a Plex Pass, you have to activate the Plex mobile app to enable personal media server streaming. Now the Plex app without that activation will work with the content that Plex offers for free through their streaming channels, but the stream from your server or from somebody else's, you will need to pay for activation if you are not a Plex Pass user. It should be noted though that you do not have to activate the apps on televisions. This is only for mobile phone and tablet apps. Now on the mobile side, you will see the option to download media for offline viewing if you're connecting to a Plex server that is attached to a Plex Pass account. Without Plex Pass, you can only stream media in real time, not download it. Now if you have a Plex Pass, you get access to additional mobile apps. One of my favorites is called Plex Amp, and this is a dedicated music player for your Plex Media Library. We covered this app already in depth, so definitely check out my video about that. But it's got a lot of cool visualizations here, and it's just a better way, I think, to access your music on the go. Additionally, they have a server management app called Plex Dash, and you can log in and get real-time access to what your server is up to. You can scan your libraries and do some basic management tasks here without having to take out your web browser. Now, PlexPass also sprinkles additional features into the different media types that it supports. And if we take a look at my Star Wars movies here, you'll see that I have two different editions of The Empire Strikes Back. I've got the original one here, which I have called Despecialized in my library. And this is a feature that allows you to declare a particular file as a unique edition of a movie and give you two separate entries. Without this feature on a regular non-Plex Pass account, it would merge these two files together, but now you can separate them. And we did a video about this last month. So that's a really useful thing that a lot of people were quite excited about, at least from my comment stream. Another feature that you get as a Plex Pass user is a lot of extras added to the mix. So for example, it has a bunch of trailers and other things that are associated with this movie that are served from Plex's servers but are attached to this listing that I have on my personal media server. And in addition to the stuff that comes down from uh, Plex directly, you can also add your own things that attach to this piece of media. So for example, I could add a making of video that I might have in my library somewhere. And rather than having that sit alone, I can have it sit underneath the main movie in this extras section here. So you can really enhance the quality of your library by adding additional media to the mix. And that is limited to Plex Pass users only. And that was a subject of another video that we did a few months back. Now for movie buffs who are collecting HDR movies now, but still have standard dynamic range displays, they want to play those movies back on occasionally. If your server is powerful enough, there is a Plex Pass feature to tone map HDR to SDR, so you don't have to keep multiple versions of the same movie. And again, that feature is specific to Plex Pass. Now for TV lovers, uh, they have some features that I think are pretty useful on Plex Pass. One of them is the ability to automatically skip intros for a show. So when your intro pops up on the show you're watching, you'll see a button here that says skip intro. And if you do that, it'll bring you right to the beginning of the show. And what's nice about this is that it will detect the intro no matter where it might be in the show. 
Some shows have it like five or six minutes in and it will find it and give you the option to skip ahead for more efficient binging. Like the movies, you also have the ability to look at trailers and other extras and you're able to add those extras to the media if you want on a season or show level basis. Now the free tier of Plex allows you to watch live TV if you have a TV tuner attached to your Plex server. That's a topic we've covered quite a bit in the past. With a Plex Pass, in addition to watching live TV, you can record live TV through their DVR functionality. And it's pretty much a full-fledged DVR that you gain access to. So in addition to tuning an episode of a TV show, you can record it. You can record every season of a show. All of the basic time-shifting features and other things you would expect from a DVR is built into Plex if you have the Plex Pass. Now, as far as your music library is concerned, you saw that you get access to Plex Amp. And within that app, they've got a lot of neat stuff like sonic analysis that can group together songs that sound similar to each other. So if you're in a mood for a particular type of music, you can dial that up and have a playlist shuffling through that sounds sonically similar so that you stick to a particular genre or perhaps just a general vibe that you're looking for. Additionally, they have some lyrics that can be pulled up through Lyric Find if you have a Plex Pass and those lyrics will sync up with the song as it's playing back, so you can sing along with Alanis Morissette or whoever else is in your library. Now, Plex also allows you to store and organize your personal photos and videos that come off your phone or any other camera for that matter, and this is part of the free tier. You can load everything up and organize it and share it with your users. It works pretty nicely. Now, if you have a Plex Pass, you get a few added features from an organizational standpoint. And this might be really useful if you've got a lot of photos to manage. What you'll see with a Plex Pass is the tag photos option and the location names. And what this will do is automatically add additional metadata to your photos based on where they were taken or what's in them. So, for example, if I do a quick search here of photos for dog, you'll see that it's found a bunch of photos in my library here that it uh, automatically recognized as a picture containing a dog. So I don't have to go through and tag all these myself. You can see all these photos are just uh, numbered with the uh, serial number that the camera assigned to them. So this is a quick way to kind of get through your photos quickly and do it on your own server versus a cloud service. But again, you do need a Plex Pass for those features to be enabled. Now you can sign up for Plex Pass using my affiliate link at lon.tv slash Plex Pass. It's available as a monthly, annual, and lifetime subscription. If you do the lifetime thing, you pay once and it's with you for as long as you walk the earth. That might be the best way to go if you're using Plex quite frequently. But of course, the monthly option is a good way to try it out to see if those features are of use to you. I'm also going to put a link in the video description to the support article here that details all of the Plex Pass features, and this gets updated whenever they add something new. I am sure I didn't cover everything that Plex Pass offers in this video, so if there's something that you feel is important, definitely let me know down in the comment section, and that might inspire a future video. But all in, Plex Pass for me is very, very useful, and hopefully this video helps you to decide whether or not it's something that you might find useful as well. I want to thank Plex for their long-standing support of the channel, and we'll be back with another Plex video next month. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Chris Allegretta, Brian Parker, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Baby Metal Fox God, Tom Albrecht, Amda Brown, Matt Zagaya, and Tech Time with Eric. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more.
And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.